<laughs> Hello, Parapolis. What are four steps you can take to help you at least <laughs> semi-successfully tame your parrot? My Catalina Macaw Kailani, who <laughs> is going to help me talk to you about taming in this video. Now, there are three different things that we could talk about and that we will be talking about in different videos. One is getting a hairstylist, okay, not really, but I'm, I'm getting preened, I'm getting my hairstylist helping me out here. Um, one is taming your parrot. One is training your parrot to become a hairstylist so that you can make lots of money while they work. And number three is tr trying to help your parrot not bite you. And these are three things that are wonderful and super important for helping you have a blissful bond with your parrot. Because after all, that's what it's all about. So that you can do videos and not be eaten alive. Okay, what you doing? Stay tuned and at the end we'll also I'll show you a trick that Kailani is learning in her training. So as you can see she's pretty tame although she's a little hyper. Hey that didn't feel good. And she likes to mess with my hair but anyway. Um, four keys to <clears throat> taming your parrot. The first key is diet. <clears throat> so if your parrot is calcium deficient your parrot could be moody on top of that their feathers are gonna get a little dingy because they're not gonna have enough calcium because parrots use calcium for every system in their body they use it for their beak their feathers and for their bones so calcium is really important now diet and the reason I say this is because unfortunately right now every exotic pet store I go to uh, that has parrots they, they are feeding their parrots a seed-based mix so that there are seeds in addition to the pellets, which means that the parrot pulls out the seeds because they're like candy. They knock the rest of the food out of the dish, which means they're wasting your money, and they eat seeds which, number one, are fattening, um, which isn't good for them. Number two, doesn't satiate their real hunger, like they don't get the nutrition they need so they eat more hence getting fat um, so they're eating more of the food and number three seeds inhibit some of the absorption of that calcium so you want to change your parrot's diet and make sure that you're feeding about 70 percent pelleted diet because parrot pellets are made for parrots it's got everything in it that they need Every expert that I talk to, from Tony Silva to my avian veterinarian, they all say, like they can't say enough about, yes, a pelleted diet is a good thing. It may not be perfect, but I think it may be as close as it gets right now. You're not really going to be able to feed all of the vitamins and minerals that your parrot needs just with vegetables and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and I don't know, maybe some people really, really do, but every expert I talk to says pellets. Give them those pellets. Now, if you don't give your parrot the seeds, that means that you can be so selfish and keep the seeds so that you are the seed dispenser. It means that you get to be like, kind of like the grandma or the grandpa that spoils the grandchild. And that's going to take you a long ways toward that taming. So, you know, right now, this is perfect because she's being a little untamed. She's not flying away, which a lot of untamed parrots do. But she's not really behaving, and one reason for that is because scarlet macaws tend to be a little hyper. <clears throat> At least this one is, but I do think that that's just scarlet macaw, I mean, uh, Catalina macaws in general. And I think it comes from their scarlet parent. But anyway, so if you are the one that gives out the seeds when you are spending time taming your parrot, 
then they're going to start to like you more. It starts to create a real positive association. And we want to not only create a positive association, we want to actually have a couple different positive associations and build them up so that our parrots want to be with us, they're going to love us, we're going to love just being around them, we're going to feel more bonded to them, and we're going to enjoy them more. Right? I know a bird flew overhead, but you don't have to bite me for it. Okay, number two. The second thing you want, the second key, is going to be to have patterned behaviors. What I mean by that is parrots are actually real habitual creatures. The truth is we are too. We just don't tend to think of ourselves that way or we tend not to be very aware of it. But, you know, you go to bed at night, you eat at certain times. There's actually a lot of habitual behaviors that we do and that parrots really like to do as well. If we use this, then one of the things that happens is that we're going to be able to really give our parrots some communication about what's going on. One reason an untamed parrot is going to be either skittish or biting is because they don't know what's going on. Like, they haven't established a, a rapport with you, they haven't established a bond with you, and, you know, you go to pick them up, and we're so much bigger than them that, you know, they just obviously get into an automatic self-defense and kind of like taking care of themselves because they don't know what's going on kind of place. So if instead we have patterned behaviors, one of the things that's going to happen is our parent starts to get to know what's going on. For example, I tamed my turquoise green cheek conure and I had a pattern. I would go, I would get him in the morning, I would put him on my shoulder and then we would go to the Everglades Park and at the park um, we would walk around and then eventually I'd, I'd find a bench, I'd sit on the bench and when I sat on the bench I pulled out the seeds, it was a seed mix so it had other things too if he wanted something else to eat and he got to really know, like just in two or three trips my parrot got to know that there were going to be seeds, like he knew the pattern to the point where when we got to the park and we sat on the bench I was really surprised like the second or third time He's like positioning himself and he's kind of going like this, like, where are my seeds? You know, he was ready for his seeds. So that means he had a real positive association. He knew what was happening. He knew the pattern. He knew the chain of events so quickly. I was so amazed how quickly he learned it. And he had something he was looking forward to. He had something that he liked about me. Within like a week and a half, he got to the point where he was cuddling with me and he was doing really well. I was going to breed him, but then I changed my mind, so I rehomed him, and I wanted to tame him so that he would have a great life, so that someone would feel so comfortable being with him, and loving him, and being loved by him, and that's exactly what happened. And the first thing they did was they sent me a video of him cuddling into the new owners. I was so thrilled. So that can happen. Now, I will say, I think that smaller birds can be easier to tame, and younger birds are definitely easier to tame. Kailani here is only a year old, but she's a little wild, aren't you? Yes, you're a little wild. And that makes her a little hard because she's a little sporadic. You see how she just like randomly kind of does that and does things to me? Um, and that, that has to do, I think, a lot with just sort of like a lot of energy. She's young and she's, she doesn't fly around, unfortunately. When I bought her, her wings were clipped, and so she can't even like fly in the house. We're waiting for those feathers to grow back, and it's been almost a year. So it takes some time for some of those feathers to grow back. However, I don't know if you could tell, she loves me, otherwise she wouldn't preen me, and she loves being with me. <laughs> and I'm working on taming her as well, and she's pretty darn tame. I mean, you could see that. But I'm working on even more, and I'm working on training with her to channel some of her energy. Right? Ah! <laughs> so that things like that don't happen. Okay, the third key to taming your parrot is that clipping. Now, um, we also have a harlequin macaw that's a baby. She's only four months old, and we have not clipped her wings. Um, we actually did, did just a little tiny bit, but like it hasn't inhibited her flying at all. We really, you know, we love the colors on their wings. Those flight feathers tend to be the most colorful. If you look at a bird like an Amazon that's mostly green, um, 
their, they, their wings have colors. Those fly feathers are very colorful. Plus, birds got wings and it's made for flying and it gives them exercise and it's a beautiful, incredible thing to see. Um, I, we love, we just love having our parrots be able to fly. We clip every time they're banging into windows or they're going and they are a threat to another parrot. Like if they're going to another cage, someone smaller and threatening them, you know, when it comes to safety, we will clip. But when it comes to taming, it's, I think it's important, unfortunately. The reason it's important is because when your parrots feathers or sorry wings are, are clipped then what happens is they they know that they can't fly and they tend to stay with you more when they know that they can't fly and they stay with you more it speeds up they're working through their emotional process and here's what I mean about that hi Kailani did you hear that she's learned how to say hi Kailani um, so that emotional charge what that is is you it's a fear charge so your parrot is afraid of you because they aren't tamed. They haven't had an experience with a human that's happy, comfortable, wonderful, loving, and so they're scared. It's kind of like if you ran into a, I don't know, a big rhinoceros, you, you probably wouldn't automatically go up to hug it. If you did, you, you probably wouldn't survive it. So, you know, I mean, it's kind of that kind of thing. Like, they don't know that they can have a really good relationship with you. All they know is that you're big and, you know, and you're going after them. One of the things that happens is that people go to pick a parrot up in their cage, and the cage is like their personal space. They know it's their territory, and they don't like anyone coming into their territory. And so, a lot of people go to pick them up, and they get bitten. Now the person, because it physically hurts, you know, they say that you, you shouldn't react. And I agree, but like, I have a really hard time not reacting. It's really hard for me to just stand there and, and endure the pain. So if it's hard for you, I understand. Um, and the parrot, you know, so you kind of go, ow, and, and you probably don't want to pick your parrot up anymore. You probably don't want to try. Or you're mad, or you're bleeding, or you know, something you're developing an emotional charge and your emotional charge says ah this is painful i don't like it and now when i see my parrot you know it's like i'm afraid because it causes me pain here come here sweetie come here good girl there you go good job the same is true for your parrot it had this big hand coming at it and it didn't know what to do so it went into a self-defense mode and it bit and that made the problem go away. And now it has learned that when it's scared, it can like either scream and or bite and the problem goes away. And the next time you come, it goes, oh, this is a fierce experience. Fearful, like it, get, it adds to the fear. So now we're building more of a negative emotional charge in the sense that you're both getting more scared, more uncomfortable, more unhappy. Your ways around that are either use a glove that when they nip, it's not gonna hurt and you can withstand it, or use a stick and get them to step out on a stick if that'll work. When you're taming, the very best thing to do is to just take them into a different room so that they can't even see their cage. You do want to have like a perch or something where they can hang out. They don't have to necessarily be on your body. If they're still uh -huh. biting and if they're still super stressed and nervous, then on your body isn't going to work for either of you. In that case, you know, have them on a perch and have them somewhere in your proximity. They can be just in the room. It can, they can be further away if that works for both of you. What's that? That wasn't nice. Calm down. But as you get more comfortable, it's going to be better and better to bring that perch closer and closer to you and just let them hang out with you. When they just hang out with you and nothing happens, there's no hand coming at them. There's no being bitten. There's no, you know, none of the negative things are happening. But instead, there's never seeds in their cage. But you walk by and maybe you put a seed on their perch or whatever it is you do, you know, you go and you give them a seed. Now you start to create a positive association. Instead of that unwelcome and unfun experience where they are biting you because you're going to their cage 
No, be gentle. Hey, what's up? Relax, relax. Sometimes birds fly overhead and that can scare them because that, you know, that can be a predator coming after them kind of thing. And so she doesn't fully understand, nor should she, that since I'm here, the predator's not gonna come and we're in a lanai and close to the lanai, you know, she's fine, she's safe, but I don't necessarily even want her to think she's safe because if she ever got out, I want her to be very mindful of the birds above and, um, and, and take care of herself. But um, of course, it makes her kind of react and you see she kind of instead nips at me. So we just have to relax a little and not get so nippy. Yes. Okay, so you're giving out the seed and whether your parrot is on a perch several feet away in the same room with you, on the perch right next to you, or on you, and maybe, you know, maybe you set an alarm. Maybe you work for an hour or do whatever you're doing and your parrot's either on your shoulder because you don't have to be like engaging the whole time with them, but whatever it is, you're spending time with them, which is the fourth key, and maybe an alarm goes off and you give them a seed so that now maybe alarms or bells are going to have a positive association for them and they know at that point from that pattern that when the bell chimes you're going to give them a seed or something like that you set up you know you want to work with your own schedule what works for you in your house and with you and your parrot but you want to have something like maybe you have a harness and you take them for a walk around the block and maybe at the end of the walk you give them a seed whatever it is you know do something with them um, bring them into the bathroom or into the shower with you if you have a shower perch that the moisture is really good for their feathers if you aren't already bathing them and I mean and even if you are bathing them the moisture is really good for them and it's just a pattern but it then they get to know oh this is the part where we're gonna go in the bathroom or this is the part where the harness is gonna go on me which can be challenging I mean maybe that's too hard at first for you but then we're gonna do this. We're gonna sit in the shower or she's gonna sit at her computer and she's not even gonna pay attention to me so I'm safe for an hour. Or we're gonna walk around the block. And once they've been around the block two or three times, they know that nothing's gonna happen. But I'm gonna get a seat at the end of that. So have different things. And then you're gonna be able to build on top of that and you're gonna be able to add to the patterns. But when you have a routine and patterns like that, your parrot's gonna really get to know what's going on. They're gonna really get to know what's happening. Um, within less than two weeks, like close to two weeks though, my conure got to the point to where he was looking at me from the cage going, are you gonna take me out? I mean, I could tell, it was really cool. It really shifted our relationship because he went from being so untamed and kind of scared and skittish to being cool with it and you know, I could take him out of the cage and he wasn't biting me at the end and he was looking forward to me coming and getting him. And we were really spending time together. Now, key number four. Right now with the pandemic, it's a great time to, at home, spend time with your parrot. I would say if you can do four to six hours a day or more, that's great. Again, it doesn't mean that they're biting your face the whole time. Hey, yeah, be nice, be nice. It means that they're in your proximity. You're in the same environment. <clears throat> yes, you want to spend some time engaging. And again, you want to make sure you're giving out that seed. Make sure that they have their pellets and their water in case they need them. Hey, sweetie, you're, you're being a little hard on me today. Why? You're being a little too much. But you're just spending time with them. For four to six hours, I mean, of course, within 10 days, their behavior is drastically going to change because that really helps them get through that emotional charge. They go from a total place of fear, not knowing how to relate to you, not knowing what you're like, not knowing what you do, not knowing what to expect, to very quickly, once they've spent three, four days, five days with you for four to six hours, they very quickly learn that you're not going to hurt them, that you're going to give them seeds, um, you're gonna provide food. Maybe you're gonna start to do a little step up depending on how friendly they are, how you know how close you're getting. You're gonna very quickly really start to show them that their environment's safe, their environment provides food, it provides water, it provides seeds, you provide seeds. You know, spend a little time. Maybe when that, that charm time goes off, like every hour, stop and take a breather, 
you know, stop what you're doing because it's good to take a break from whatever it is that you're doing and maybe talk to them for a few minutes and dispense that seed. They may not understand what you're saying, but they get a sense of it and they certainly really tune into the energy and they know that it's amazing how much they really can sense a person's intent and what a person's really after, that kind of thing. So then, you know, you spend five minutes talking to them, giving out a seed, and then you go back to whatever it is you're doing, but spend that four to six hours for 10, 12 days, 14 days, and see what it does for you. It should make a really nice change for you. Again, if your parrot is older, um, let's say you, you got a rescue parrot that's older and has been in a negative situation, then, you know, I would say at least the four to six hours, certainly not on your body because probably the parrot's stressed out with it, maybe you're stressed out with it, and, you know, you may really need to give them some space to let them see that everything's fine, to give them, you know, that, that time and space to adjust. And if you have a situation like that or if you have a parrot that's real nervous, um, try using some CBD oil. We sell CBD oil for parrots because it's a great thing to have for your first aid kit in case your parrot is in any pain um, or if they get cut and you don't want them to pick at it because that's exactly what they do. Like if, they, if their foot or some part of them gets injured and it's sort of throbbing on them, it's swelling, they really pick at it and, and it makes it worse. So if you need to work with kind of calming your parrot, um, have some CBD oil. It's gonna help them relax it is not any kind of drug with the hallucinogenic properties or anything like that because it doesn't have the THC. I would never ever take anything like that or give it to my parrots if it had the drug components because I don't, you know, that, I don't even know what that would do to either of us and it's not something I want to do. So it's something that is safe for your, actually yourself, but it's made for your parrot and maybe that can help you. But again, like that's if you have like a rescue parrot or a parrot that's really nervous for whatever reason that you're working with and that you want to tame. All right, let's see if we can get you to do a trick for the end of our video. You ready? Back. Back. Oh, she's just like in a mood today. Come on, step up. Good step up. Back. Back. Okay. Not a good day for whatever reason. We all have good days and bad days. She kind of tried, but I guess she's having a bad day. There you have it. It happens. So on those days, you just need to be a little more patient and endure a little more. <laughs> all right. Thank you for joining me. I hope that helps you. Those four steps. Again, very quickly. It's diet. Keep the seeds so that you're the seed dispenser. It gives them a real good reason to love you. Number two, pattern behaviors. When your parrot knows what's going on, they, you know, you're following the same patterns, they're gonna relax a lot more, they're gonna know what's expected, they're gonna know what's coming, and they're gonna enjoy you more. They know what's happening. Number three, unfortunately, clip their wings. It's gonna help them move through any fear and emotional charges much more quickly because instead of flying off, they're gonna have to stay with you and they're gonna find out so much faster that you're no big deal. Actually, you're nice, you have seeds, you're loving, you have loving words, that kind of thing. And number four, make sure you really dedicate four to six hours a day for like two weeks, 10 to 12 days, something like that. And really make that commitment because even if they're not on you, as long as they're in your environment for four to six hours a day, they're going to really, really learn that it's actually not so bad here. And the closer you can get them to you, the faster that's gonna go and the, the quicker you'll develop that parrot bond. Um, please let me know how you do with these four keys to taming your parrot. I want you and your parrot to have a wonderful relationship because it's a lot easier to spend time with your parrot, love your parrot, be loved by your parrot when they're tame. Thank you so much for joining crazy Kailani and I in this video. We'll see you next time.